And then the two final topics that I want to talk about um, are simulation methods for inference. So there is randomization and the bootstrap. So I think that I've drawn for you my favorite picture before, but I will just draw it again. Um, so we've got uh, the population, the population, and the sample. And uh, one of our goals in statistics is to draw conclusions about the population based only on information from the sample. So we call that inference. And a lot of what inference involves is thinking about a sampling distribution. And so a sampling distribution is a distribution of a statistic under a hypothesis. So oftentimes um, we would be doing, uh, you know, hypothesis testing. And in this case, our hypotheses are almost always, our null is that beta one is equal to zero and our alternative is that it is not equal to zero. And so we want to know um, what would beta one look like if the null were true. And so far in this class, um, we've kind of just been saying, okay, we have these L, I, N, E conditions. And so we can use the T distribution to approximate the sampling distribution. Um, but that relies on some assumptions. Um, and again, it's just an approximation. So uh, the statisticians who came up with a lot of the inferential techniques that we use in statistics, they really wanted to be able to use simulation methods, but they didn't have computers. And so they developed these approximations like the t-distribution. Um, so if you've taken STAT 220 at St. Thomas, you have probably seen a simulation-based curriculum. The LOC5 book is, uh, has a lot of simulation in there, so you've probably seen randomization and the bootstrap, but I know not all of you have taken that course. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a conceptual overview of how both of these techniques work. So uh, for randomization, um, this is a simulation that works best for hypothesis testing. So remember, we have two inferential tasks. We often want to do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. You can actually do either type of inference with either type of simulation method, but randomization really works best for hypothesis testing. And I usually say that this goes with the question, is this number different than zero? So in other words, like is beta one equal to zero or is beta one not equal to zero, for example. So here's how it works. So step one is always to record your observed sample statistic, which in the case of this class is just about almost always uh, beta one hat. Maybe I will move this a little bit so that this can be right there, okay? So we record our observed value. We're gonna uh, use that later on, so we just need to write it down. Then step two, we're going to break the relationship in the data. So in this case, we're going to mix up one of the variables. So if you're doing a simple linear regression, you have a y and an x variable, maybe leave your y variable the way that it is, but mix up the values of the x variable. So um, you permute them. And then you're going to compute and record the value of the randomization statistic. So in this case, that means the slope with the y variable left the way that it was and the mixed up value of x. Um, it's probably going to be around zero because there's no relationship. And then step four is you repeat steps two to three many times, where many means a thousand or ten thousand or a million times. Do it a lot of times. 
them, and then you're going to look at the distribution of randomization statistics. It's going to be centered around the null value. Um, and in this case, that's zero, because that's the number that we see appearing in our hypotheses. And you want to know how extreme is our observed value, that was from step one, in the context of the distribution. And you can basically compute, uh, it's like the p-value, the percentage of the distribution that's as extreme or more extreme than the, the observed value. So if it's really weird, then you would probably reject the null. And if it's not that extreme, then you would fail to reject the null. And then our other simulation technique is the bootstrap. And this is best for confidence intervals. So I usually say um, the question here is what are some other reasonable values uh, we could have observed? So we saw a particular slope value, um, but we could have drawn a different random sample um, and that would have given us a slightly different slope. So we want a confidence interval. That would be what are some other reasonable values we could have observed. And the steps for the bootstrap are pretty similar to the steps for randomization. So step one is also to record the observed statistic. And then step two is to draw a bootstrap sample from the data. And so that is a sample with replacement uh, of the same size as the original data. And step three is compute and record the bootstrap statistic. So in the case of this class, that would be the slope uh, for the X and Y from the bootstrap sample. And then step four is to look at the distribution of bootstrap statistics and find the middle, let's say, 95%. Uh, the book has some other methods for finding a confidence interval, but I like the one where you just find the middle 95%, um, and that would be your confidence interval. So I hope that uh, these topics will make more sense when we get to actually do them in R, so I'm going to switch over to RStudio for the rest of the videos.